Hey everybody, Fifth Horseman here, playing more Kerbal Space Program, and I have figured out the problem with my ship. It was obvious. You guys have probably already commented uh, about it on the thing, even though I haven't released that video yet. But I needed to anchor this guy to the ground, and what better way than with the uh, the pylon and the pipe uh, from Kerbal Attachment System. Um, and now we should be able to rise this thing up. Um, Sinner's Creed is in the cockpit already. Uh, the... Um, he can turn on SAS if he wants to, but he's leaving it off at the moment until we get this thing lifted up. Uh, I am by no means positive that this will work. Uh, let's go ahead and get to the correct thing here. Uh, that's weird. Oh, I guess this is the correct thing. It just doesn't show the guy. Okay. Let's go ahead and bring up the GUI. And what we want to do here is, now that this thing is down, I want to very slowly raise this thing up. Um, I'm thinking like like a quarter meter at a time, and it's not extend. I want to <laughs> we want to just slowly bring this thing up. Oh god, it's working. It's kind of working. I'm just slowly bringing these things up, matching them roughly in amount. I wish there was a there was a uh, combined control, like a way to lock them together so that I could winch them at the same time. But it's working. I hope I don't break the engine. I don't think I will. The joints are the joints are pretty solid in this game. Uh-oh, uh-oh, it's going to the side, it's going to the side. Bring it back this way. <laughs> oh god, look at the fuel tank on the bottom there. It's not looking very happy. Okay, how are we doing as far as left and right? We're, we're looking really good. This is looking really good. This would be a little bit easier if the car, uh, the, where the winches were in the car, was a little bit taller. If it was a baller, if it had a girl who looked good, it would call her. Um, so that we weren't pulling so crazily on this. Okay, I'm going to switch to the ship now. We're going to turn attitude control on. We are going to stage the engine. I've also filled up his, his fuel tank completely. It wasn't filled up completely before. Let's unplug these. And get off the ground. Nice job, everybody. <laughs> okay, we are also burning through fuel, so let's uh, backspace to open his solar panels, which apparently doesn't work. Let's open this solar panel right here so that we will have... This is a very, uh, very efficient launch, and we kind of need an efficient launch because uh, he doesn't have a ton of fuel in him, but he's not bad. And he also doesn't have a Kerbal Engineer uh, re Redux Redo module on him, which isn't a huge deal, but it's going to require me to be in map mode a little bit here. Um, here's our space station. Let's set this as, a, as the target. Looks like we're doing pretty good as far as as far as angle coming up here. We do have to burn a slightly north uh, from east just simply to get a connection here. There we go. Ideally, ideally we'll get. Oh my God, we're gonna get a perfect connection. Nah, no, not quite. <laughs> not quite. Not bad, though. These guys are 2.1 kilometers apart. This is actually really perfect. This is perfect. Go ahead and aim at the maneuver node like you can because you are a master pilot. Or actually, I don't know if you're a master pilot. I think it's the uh, I think the ship is a master pilot because <laughs> it has that probe core on it. <laughs> but uh, but yeah, this is the beginnings of our of our orbital extraplanetary launch pad base, which is going to be building all the big ships that go everywhere. Um, I didn't say it last episode, but the, I launched the Eve ship from Kerbin simply because I I, I grossly o underestimated the amount of time it would take to to set up all the operations here. Um, especially without the uh, without the engineers on the surface and everything. And actually, now that I'm thinking about it, I don't even think we need to, to rendezvous with this base. 
<laughs> I don't know if we need to rendezvous with this base. Uh, yeah, because this is the one that doesn't have any connection to it, so it literally doesn't matter. We don't we don't need to rendezvous with this base. I'm I'm stupid. Actually, I think what we want to do is we have something here. Let's uh, we don't care about the target anymore. Uh, five trainer, we don't care about that. Orbital silo, that's actually what we want to, that's what we want to meet up with. Um, he's going to be here when we're here. So how about we set up a maneuver node here. There we go. If we burn like this, we're going to have a, a very close intersect. And it's bothering me that I don't see the maneuver node stuff, so I'm going to hit F5 and F9. That's disturbing. I apparently just crashed the game, and I'll be back. Okay, through the magic of magic, uh, just quitting and restarting the game worked. So, sweet. Let's go ahead and name it our, at our maneuver node here. And do what will be should be a fairly short burn. Okay, let's go back to aiming just prograde. Turn this off. Let's verify our... There we go. I have no idea what that is. 0.3 kilometers. That's perfect. And here comes our target. Stay on target. Stay on target. Okay, we're within the physics window. I saw that pause, so I'm slowing down time warp. I'm just going to delete this. Uh, we don't want to aim prograde, or yeah, we want to re aim retrograde to target, because we're going to be very close to this guy. We're going to be within, probably within 100 meters of him. And hopefully we won't crash into him. I'm actually going to see here. We're going to go into chase mode. I'm going to turn on the HUD. What I'm going to do is I'm going to rotate so that our solar panels are on this side of him. So in case we get within, say, what is that, five meters? <laughs> we won't crash our solar panels into the station. Okay, I'm going to also just go into regular mode so I don't so I don't start freaking out when the retrograde changes. Okay, we do not need this engine anymore. Um, we don't really even need its fuel, so let's go ahead and disconnect this. And then this thing uh, needs to, before he runs out of power, he needs to turn this way, burn himself this way, then he needs to aim retrograde. Oh, not to target, though. Retrograde to orbit. And there he goes. He's dead. Okay. Now, this guy, um, the only thing we have that can control anything is the claw. And this guy's going to be easier to claw. And we are going to turn towards our target. Oh. And we apparently have no, well, we have a little bit of roll authority here. We're very low on monoprop, so, and we have to use monoprop to translate. So we cannot use the monoprop to turn this thing. So I'm going to go into physics warp here just to get this thing turning closer to the, to the target here. We're, we're actually low enough on monoprop. Actually, we're not low on monoprop. I keep thinking that, but this guy is probably full of monoprop. Yeah, it's these things are, are making it look like we're super low on monoprop. We're gonna want to we're gonna want to clamp on to the to the cupola of this guy. So are we still in chase mode? No, we weren't. Now we are. Okay, this guy's like this. Let's go ahead and bring him this way. Um, I'm actually going to set. This docking port is my target, so that we get the so we get the crosshairs. Okay, we are we are aimed correctly. We are pushing our our target towards the docking port, so everything's looking good. Okay, we're as good as we can really expect to be. That's pretty. That's pretty close. Want to see? Uh, let's see what Sanders can do. Ah, there's a big claw there. <laughs> That's funny. 10, 20, 30, probably has 40 down there. I'm not sure. I wonder what those numbers mean. Oh, well, uh, let's see. Now we want to control from here. 
and we want to set this as our dark as our target. Because with fighting controls on, you use a lot less uh, mono prop to. Um, where's the sun? The sun is uh, the sun is really high in the sky, so we're fine. We're actually coming in a lot faster than I thought we were. Uh, and we passed it, and fine controls are on. RCS is off. I'm hitting the wrong buttons. Why is RCS off? Why can I not turn RCS on? I'm hitting R. Oh! Do you know why I couldn't hit R? Because my mouse was on the left-hand side of the screen, and it might have screwed up staging. Sometimes I want to murder whoever in Kerbal Space Program decided that mouse on the left side of the screen meant no, don't. Okay, now this thing's rotating, so I'm gonna have to fix it with the time warp fix. I'm just, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna send the claw back over there to stop him from rotating. Okay, that made me very mad. Okay, where is our target? I mean, I see it, but where's our? There's our target indicator. Okay, I see the target. I just don't know where the indicator was. <laughs> <sighs> Sometimes this game, I'm telling you. Okay, there we go. We're we're doing good. We're doing good. Get down there and come on. You got to be close. Whoa, wrong way. There we go. We now have a lot of monoprop and a lot of fuel storage <laughs> and a lot of rocket part storage available for this guy. Now, that's not actually going to help very much at the moment. This guy, in addition to uh, having this storage, we need to um, we need to actually get fuel and rocket parts up here. We also uh, need more storage, um, more rocket part storage, and more scrap part storage. So I'm going to build that and bring that up here, um, and then we can start actually just ferrying rocket parts up here, um, getting a oh and a, and a, a bigger a bigger place for people to to, to stay. And then, um, and then we'll be ready to start to start uh, operations in full. And the next thing on the list is we've got something ready to build here. I'm just going to finalize it. I've already set the stakes, and it's a little bit farther away than I thought it was going to be, to be honest. But it's not too bad. It's also a lot more cockeyed than I thought it was going to be, which is bad. Um, Luckily, we have a winch car, so we're, we can fix that. <laughs> yeah, this thing was not supposed to be cockeyed like this, so we're going to have to fix it. Um, we are going to have to fix it um, in a minute, though, because we're going to be using... We're going to actually drop these stakes from now on, and we're going to build stuff on here unless we actually need a thing. So, let's go ahead and fix that. That's the way Kerbal Space Program works. You, you fix things constantly. Uh... Okay, I think this is uh, original Canadian. You are kind of turned into, even though you're a scientist, you're kind of turned into the engineer of this because we want the engineers to stay in the vessel. And unlink these things. And then you're actually going to take this pylon. Uh, we're going to rotate it. Uh, we don't really need to rotate it, but I think I'm going to. Looks nicer when it's when it's roughly equal to the vessel. Oops, not in your head. I can't wait for Kerbal Inventory System to come out. The, the only thing I don't like about Kerbal Inventory System is that engineers are the only guys who can uh, who can use it. Um, I just wish that there was some reason to have pilots and scientists. I mean, there's you need pilots at the beginning of the game for like a day until you've unlocked... Oh, you just broke the solar panel! That's coming out of your wages. That is totally coming out of your wages. <laughs> Uh, I don't think engineers can fix solar panels, but I think we're going to bring one out to see what he can do. It would be nice if an engineer could fix a solar panel that you shattered. <laughs> you just plowed right into that thing. Uh, let's go ahead and grab this. <laughs> that was actually really hilarious. Um, but, uh, yeah, it's just, I mean, you know, pilots, pilots are needed until you unlock the probe core that can do what a pilot can do. Uh, scientists are sadly not really needed at all. Um, all you people who have, who have said you wanted to be scientists, I have seriously considered making you all engineers. 
Uh, oops, let's grab that and attach it right here. And then what we're going to do is we're going we're gonna to winch car this thing up a little bit, and then we're going to link these two things together. And then we're going to, uh, I think we have a couple more pipes. Yeah, we got two more pipes up here that we're going to link from here to here. This car wasn't really intended to be driven all that much, so this might be more than uh, that it can handle. Let's try docking mode. You guys all say that, everybody says that docking mode is the way to go. Um, this guy can't move. Okay, he's moving now. I mean, I know he doesn't have very much uh, move authority, simply because he's light and he's on Minmus, but he sh he he should have moved a little bit. Okay. Uh, yeah, I wish this winch's control. I guess I can put it down here. Yeah, I never want to get going too fast. Like like, a uh, one meter per second seems fast for this car. Okay, we're just gonna we're gonna get his things around the outside of this thing get it nice up and against it and we are going to put the brakes on Whew! really wasn't intending to use this car ever again i just realized oh wait no we don't need them i just <laughs> i just realized and then realized again that i built one with four i was actually smart uh, we do though need another kerbal so i think it should be whoever has a name moose Head on out here. You're the engineer anyway. Uh, let's see. Where are those other connectors? Okay. But yeah, I put those... Trying to keep things tidy, I put the connectors in here. I just realized that that I flew up to, into space with those with those winch connectors on the other thing. But luckily I built... I thought ahead and I built more than I needed. Which is something I don't generally do. <laughs> Okay, you are ready to go. You are GTG. Get in your seat again. You are you're quickly becoming the car driver. I mean, but that's the problem is is I that's what I need to do with scientists. Oh come on, tell me that you can that you can. <laughs> and then tell you what, let's try something. Something I don't suggest anyone try. <laughs> I was hoping that you would uh, push on that thing. Actually, you are. <laughs> There we go. Now if we say link, and be ready to link this one when the time comes. Come on, keep pushing it. Not very good. It's still, it's still kind of cockeyed. I think we'll have a better shot at it, though, if we, uh, if we bring this thing out farther. So we need to grab this. Oh, sweet. You're able to do that. Then we're going to attach it right here. Then we're going to grab this and attach it right here. Then we are going to winch these back a little bit more to about 8.9. Now, back to you. Where are you? Oh, come on. I got too much junk in this game. Obviously. Okay, now we're going to say link to this. And we're going to push, like we did before. Again, I'm pretty sure this is how NASA would do it. And we're going to call that good. I think anything on this is going to is going to be fine. <laughs> Now, we are going to undock, or we're going to actually unplug and unplug 
and then grab this thing, put it back in its container, and now these bases are connected. He's moderately secure. Uh, we can winch in the winchy winches. Uh, we can take the brakes off. We can back this guy away a little bit. Uh, one thing is I don't think that there's room in this uh, container for these for these stakes anymore. So I think I'm just going to... I might just toss them in the recycler, to be honest with you. But, but it slides out of the, the recycle bin. Whoa, that scared the... That thing just blew up out of ra randomness. <laughs> Not exactly what I wanted to be to be honest with you. Um wow. Okay. Well, apparently if you just drop these things on the ground, although it might have been the interaction with the other thing. Let's just drop this thing and let it fly away on its own. Maybe it'll maybe it'll explode when it crashes. Uh, apparently its crash tolerance is greater than 7. Okay. Well, it's debris. We'll we'll delete it later. Um, and then the other piece that I wanted to get rid of is this freaking cubic octagonal strut, which I keep getting close to. Hey! I think, I think that thing just blew up. That, that stake just blew up. Uh, where's the strut? There it is. Let's grab this. Let's stick it to this thing. Stick it to the man. Yeah, this thing, it has parachutes on it, but it was never going to be used for parachutes. Um, I just used a, a 10 trainer, um, which is part of the problem, is this thing was really uh, not designed for the purpose of just bringing people up and landing them in a specific location. You know, like the, the specific location stuff was, um, was really more for... Uh, you know, it would need bigger engines for that, is what I'm trying to say. Oh, and it has no fuel. Well, there goes that idea. Okay, never mind. I think you should probably put your brakes on now. <laughs> okay, we'll we'll have to we'll have to do something with this thing uh, to drag it into the recycler, um, or or push it into the recycler. The last thing I want to do is with the car, um, but it, the car would probably work. Yeah, pad zero has something on it that's ready to go. And we're going to finalize it now. I'm hoping it's going to end up right here. I do not accept that. <laughs> that was crazy. I do not accept that as an option for anything to happen. Uh, let's see what we have as far as quick saves are concerned. The only thing I can imagine is that it's confused about uh, where where it's supposed to be. Um, so I'm going to, yeah, if I remember, yeah, I need to deploy these drills because they're not going in. These ones, for some reason, stopped drilling ore. Okay, and uh, so yeah, so we just need to time warp until we have our thing done here. They can almost work all the way through the night, which is kind of nice. Oh boy. Okay, let's actually watch and see what happens if we can. Oh wait, F5. Let's actually lay down a quick save. Let's wait till daytime, why not? Extra planetary launch pads. Oh, wait. Close this. Let's drop another quick save. Now, extra planetary launch pads. Let's finalize the build and actually watch the screen and see what happens here. It, like, built it off to the side. Okay, let's see if that's consistent. <laughs> That's crazy. It built it sideways for one thing, and then off to the side. About that anymore. Yeah. 
It's building it sideways. And I don't think there's anything I can do about that. I'm going to restore for this quick save. I'm going to cheat because I can't fix that bug. <laughs> I can't make the ship be different and spawn correctly. Uh, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to... Uh, I don't, see, I don't want to finalize the build. I think I'm going to have to just destroy this pad. to ruin the fact that I've that I've been doing that. Because it's just going to destroy it every time. Yeah, maybe I'll do that. <laughs> uh, well, you know what? Our main base perfectly survived this. This is obviously bad. What I can do is I can is I can delete all the debris. That's not this car. What I'm going to do is I'm going to accept that as a we, we were we didn't like that base anyway. You get on your you get in your car here. I'm going to delete all this debris. I'm going to spawn one of these on the launch pad and then I'm going to hack it up here uh using using um the hacking system, and then we're going to launch it like we were like we were supposed to. Obviously, the the ground based thing is is kind of wonky, and I, I wonder if it's because the root part was that huge container thing, and that container thing wasn't really meant to be uh, the root part. Although your own mod should be able to build your own <laughs> your own mods parts. Okay, I've landed this thing moderately close to my extra planetary launch pad base. It's a couple couple kilometers away. I just got close to the closest half degree um and i am going to uh, close hyper edit um this is kind of cheating but i did have to pay for this even though i should have been able to build it on my, my base so i think that's fine uh, i'm gonna wait until uh until hyper edit actually lands this thing um at one meter per second and then we're just going to launch it to the east and we are la landed so now we are going to hit z we're also going to hit the space bar. But this thing is basically just a ton of rocket parts uh, and s some monoprop, docking ports, um, a big base for people to stand on, uh, or for people to get into and build things. Um, and uh, uh, that's it. Uh, and then this is just going to connect as soon as this fuel is out, which, let's see, should be going out. Yeah. As soon as this fuel is out, I'm going to dump this thing. And uh, hopefully before we uh, use it up, looks like I probably have way more fuel than I need. Actually, when my apoapsis gets up to about 10, I'm going to cut the engines and dump this no matter what. Actually, my periapsis is basically, yeah, I'm going to dump this thing now. Because I, I don't want to have to carry it with me. That's stupid. <laughs> so I just toss it to the side. I could have tossed it sideways instead of down, but that's ah, gonna it'll work fine. We're gonna sidle up next to our target, and then we're gonna decide if uh, we have time to um, to dock, and I think we probably do. Might as well cheat a little bit this way. <laughs> Get us slightly closer than we would be. Okay, now you want to control from here. You want to target this docking port, uh, which means that in the HUD it's going to be straight up. Oh, I just thought of something. While I have translational authority, I did not put any... any uh, RCS jets um, sideways, or, or sorry, forward and back. Uh, why don't we have any power? Extend the solar panels. We obviously, yeah. Okay, now with the solar panels out, he should he should always have sunlight. Okay, so we need to aim. We need to get ourselves over here. <laughs> It's going to make things harder, as it always does. We could just aim the station at us, too. 
How are we doing as far as sun's concerned? Let's actually turn ourselves so that our solar panels are actually collecting sunlight. We don't want to go too fast. So the one thing we don't want to do is go too fast. So we do want to bring this down just a little bit so we're kind of going that way. Okay, now I'm going to turn around. Every now and then I get a little bit brighter. It gets a little bit brighter and you never come around. <laughs> uh, we're going to aim ourselves retrograde. I'm going to totally cheat. And then we're going to say, hold yourself retrograde. And then we are just going to sidle up next to this guy, hopefully not breaking our solar panels. Yeah, we're going to run out of we're going to run out of sunlight before this thing changes, which really sucks. But uh, as soon as we get kind of on this side here, we're going to kill our velocity. And now we should be able to aim ourselves at the docking port. So, RCS on, we are going to go down. And uh, this way, yeah. We got plenty of monoprops, so we don't need to worry about how long things are going to, or how much of it we're going to use. We, we need to worry far more about how quickly we get this thing done. So I'm possibly using more monoprop than I should. And then get our direction vector going up here. And we're just trying to get this done before the sun sets. But we can't go so fast that bad things happen. <laughs> like the stations explode. Okay, this is looking good. This is looking good. How much sun do we got? Okay, the sun is on the horizon. <laughs> okay, come on, get get yourself down there. I'm kind of overshooting. Okay, 0.4 meters per second. That's really all I'm willing to do. And it looks like we're going to be good. As the sun sets, a good way to end the episode here. I hope you enjoyed watching this. I did enjoy playing it. I am Fifth Horseman, and I will, as always, talk at you later.